Hi, I'm Nick Luhan, a professional makeup artist based in New York City and the Director of Artistry and Education for Kevin O'Quan Beauty. Today, I'm going to spend some time talking about how I am refreshing my kit and some of my favorite products to travel with as a makeup artist. The topic for today is New Year New Kit. So stay tuned as we take a journey into my kit, starting with skincare, then going into uh, complexion and canvas products, eyebrows, eyes, and finally lips. I will be sharing a lot of my tips and tricks and some of my favorite products shades and formulas with you as we go through this journey. I want to get started by giving you a really quick tour of what my kit looks like. So this is just my beauty kit. I have other kits that are reserved for artistic and crazy makeups, but this is really designed around a global makeup kit for beauty makeup. So I have the Relevel case. This is actually the extra large size kit. Let's open up the top just so you can see what's inside. So in here, I've got like my lightweight sheer foundation, all of my eyeshadow palettes, a few other tools and things that I could use. Um, this is my skincare pack, which I got from Sterilite. I love this little bag for skincare. Um, super easy to travel with, and I've got all the skincare I need in there. Let's zip this up and take a tour of the inside of my kit. So as I open it up, you'll see it's quite organized. I have to be organized so that when I'm on set, I'm not searching for products. If I have anybody assisting me, they also know where every single product in my kit is. So I start off with foundations. I think that's the most important step to any makeup. So <clears throat> when it comes to foundations, I've got liquid foundations in these little containers that I picked up at the container store. Everything is labeled so that I know what shades are which in there so that if my client falls in love with the product, I can share that with them. I've got palettes, I've got blushers, bronzers, sculpting products, eyeshadow palettes, um, lip products on this side, and then I've got some really essential products like my essential skin enhancers and my Cosetti Matrix mixing liquid, um, a few contour and sculpt sculpting palettes, and then some tools from my friends at the Sanitation Conversation. So this is disposable wax paper palettes that I can use. Um, that way I'm not sharing germs with clients. I've got some spoolies and other wands in here that are just backup in addition to the others that I travel with. Um, if you look at the top of my kit, it's pretty organized. I start with brows. Um, these are both brow products, eyeliners, and mascaras. And then my favorite highlighter on the planet. I have all six shades of the Glass Glow Face product from Kevin O'Quan Beauty. Um, for lips, I keep it really um, organized because lips can be overwhelming. So I've got my Longwear liquid lipsticks here. These are the Molten lipsticks from Kevin O'Quan Beauty. I've got a few glosses and things like that. But then when it comes to other lipstick shades, I like to travel super, super organized. So this is just um, like a pencil roll that you can get at an art store. This was a gift from somebody to me. But um, I label all my lipsticks so that I know what each shade is. So that's what that little white square is. So it's easy for me to identify identify the shades of lipstick. Plus I also keep my lip liners in here so that it's more convenient for travel. It rolls up and it snaps up so that it's easy and doesn't take up too much room. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is something that's new that I brought into my kit as far as hygiene and sanitation goes. This is one of the best tools that you can invest in um, because it's 2021 and we are going into this new world of handling COVID virus. Everyone's got to be extra careful and hygienic. This is super easy. Sterilite um, is an incredible brand. It disinfects all of your tools and your products. Um, easy to use, you just open it up, um, place your products in here. So I actually just sanitized my bronzer and a few of my eyeshadow brushes, and it takes about three minutes. It's got a lot of settings, so if you just want like a quick disinfect, you just push this button. If you're gonna wash your brushes and put them into dry, you would use this button here because it's got a little fan to dry your brushes quickly. And then let's say you just wanted to set it and forget it and leave it overnight. Um, you would press this button here and that'll cleanse everything and then leave it um, super, super hygienic for long periods of time. So this can also be like a storage carrying case. So thank you, Sterilite. This is going to be changing the game when it comes to a hygienic makeup application. Now that you've had a quick tour of my kit, let's get started with skincare. So I showed you earlier that pack from Sterilite with all my skincare products. I'm gonna open it up and just do a quick walk through and apply a few of my favorites. So the first thing I do when I sit with a client or even when I'm doing my own makeup is to start with a clean canvas. So you can tone your skin with um, any toner. However, I prefer an alcohol-free toner. So my toner of choice for myself because I'm dehydrated is the Eve Loam Rescue Toner. If you're working with a client that struggles with maskne or oily skin, I would suggest the B3 Balm uh, Pomona Toner. This is amazing. This facial toner is great for dealing with acne. Um, so I'll, to use my toner, I'm just gonna take a little bit out onto a cotton round. 
Um, sometimes I'll use two cotton rounds. Let's do two today. So pour a little bit on my cotton round. Um, this one is alcohol free and it's got ingredients to really protect your skin from free radicals and pollution. And it removes any like leftover bits of makeup from the night before or the day before. So it's an essential step in the makeup application. So um, Kevin thought, and I think most makeup artists think that beautiful makeup starts with beautiful skin. So now that I'm toned, it's time to go into any serums or any oils that you might use. Um, today I'm gonna be using the Eve Loam Radiance Oil. Super, super easy product to work with. It's quick setting, so like it absorbs into the skin really quickly. Um, a few drops is all you need. You wanna start by pressing it into the skin in the center of the face first, and then working it outward from there. So it's not exactly a lymphatic drainage massage, but it does have some of the same kind of benefits because we're moving all of the toxins from the center of the face outward and um, sending them towards the body's filtration systems and guiding them towards the heart. Okay, next up, it's time to add my moisturizer. And there's a lot of options out there for moisturizers, I, I get that, but um, I'm pretty loyal to my skincare brands. Um, and I have two that I travel with. I travel with the Eve Loam Moisture Cream, which is great for drier skin types. Let me turn it around so you can see the label, Eve Loam. Um, if you're working with somebody with oily skin or that doesn't want any oils on their skin, you can use the Eve Loam Moisture Lotion. So these are the two I travel with. This one's for dry skin, the moisture cream. This is for oily skin. And also during those like hot summer months or during um, any visits to any humid climates, the moisture lotion is gonna be your best bet. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of moisture cream out and work this into my skin. So I purposely didn't do my skincare today because I wanted to show you guys what I do. Um, I know that some artists like to use brushes or sponges to apply skincare, whatever your, whatever your tool of choice is. I do love my fingers. I think that there's um, some benefits to using your fingers when applying skincare. It tends to go on a little bit smoother and you can really feel the bone structure so that later on when it comes to highlight and contour, you're able to kind of feel where those placements are gonna go for your lighter shades and your darker shades. So now that my face is prepped, let's do a little bit of prep work around the eyes and around the lips. Um, uh, one of the first products that I ever used from my friend Julia at B3 Balm was the lip balm. And there's two options that I have in my kit. I've got the matte lip balm and I've got the more hydrating, nourishing, anti-aging lip balm. So there's two options. I'm gonna use the nourishing, anti-aging lip balm today. So I just take a little bit out with my palette and I'm gonna work from the back of my hand. And this time I'm just gonna use my fingers just to apply right to the lips. This one's beautiful. It's got um, a little bit of geranium, a little bit of lavender. It's full of antioxidants. Mm, and it's very luscious, very luxurious. I love this lip balm. Um, the next product that I wanna show you is the B3 eye cream. So normally I don't like to use eye cream on my clients before doing makeup because I feel like it does weird things to the concealer, the foundation around the eye area, but I have found the solution. The under eye, under eye cream from B3 um, Balm is amazing. It's quick absorbing, it doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel greasy. Um, just a little bit on my fingers and I just kind of like dab it on the orbital bone on both sides. And then next, I'm gonna use my fingers to really work it in. I got a little too much on that side, so let's balance it out. And I like to work in circular motions around the eyes. It feels very soothing. It stimulates blood flow. It plumps up the area. And like I said, this isn't going to have any negative effects on the wearability or the application of my concealer work or my eyeshadows or my eye primers because this eye cream is very lightweight. It's not heavy at all. And it's not really oily or greasy. A quick absorbing product. So it's something you can use day or night. Next up in my skincare routine is another essential product in my kit, especially now because we are handling a lot of maskne, a lot of breakouts. Um, this is called Dynaspot by Eve Loam. The Dynaspot is an amazing formula. It's something that I put on any irritations on the skin. A little tiny bit is all you need. Um, and as far as like a uh, treatment goes, it doesn't smell weird. It doesn't do any weird things to the makeup. It actually is really matte, so it helps to have your um, it helps to make your foundations concealers those types of things adhere even better because um, you know when your skin's irritated if you have a blemish if you have a pimple the makeup doesn't really stick to that area because it's super irritated this actually helps the makeup to adhere so um, Eve Loam Dino Spot is a must-have in my makeup kit and in my personal use so now that we've taken a tour of all of my skincare and we did a quick routine let's jump on into complexion 
naturally, the next step after skincare, when I'm applying makeup on anybody, is balancing my complexion with primer and with concealer and foundation. So first up, let's talk about primer. So the number one primer for me is the Kevin O'Quan Sensual Skin Primer. I've tried every primer on the market, and I find that the Kevin O'Quan Sensual Skin Primer, it's it's the most um, versatile. It works for all skin tones and all skin types. So I like to take a little bit out and press it into any areas of concern first. So wherever you have any um, pores, texture, where your makeup usually breaks down quickly, start by pressing it into those areas first and then distribute it outward from there. So this method is gonna make sure that those areas are really smooth. Um, this primer is very hydrating. It has aloe vera gel. Um, it does make the makeup stay on longer and it doubles up as a mixing medium to adjust the coverage and finish of your foundation. So Central Skin Primer is a must have. I actually go through a lot of this product because I use it almost every single day. Even if I'm not wearing foundation and I just want to appear a little bit smoother, this is kind of like a smoothing filter in a bottle. It's water-based, it does have silicone, but it's just the right amount. It doesn't create any slippery effect. It grabs onto that foundation and holds it in place. Next up, let's talk about foundation. So there's a lot of formulas out on the market. Kevin O'Quan alone has four different formulas that you can choose from. Um, I travel with three of the main formulas. I'm gonna walk you through all of them and then you can make your own decisions based on what your needs are as um, a makeup artist or as a makeup enthusiast. So the first step I like to talk about is the most sheer. The Strip Nude Skin Tint is a sheer lightweight formula. You can see the skin through it. You'll see freckles, you'll see your actual skin tone. If you have a natural blush, that'll show through the makeup. Um, I put a little bit on my palette here. We're gonna swatch all of these foundations in just a moment um, and it comes in 10 shades that are very versatile and I put them all in a little travel pack like this um, we'll show you what that looks like on my skin in just a moment the next option is medium buildable coverage with a satin finish the etherealist skin illuminating foundation I love this formula um, it's my go-to for myself for on camera I actually wear shade number six um, and I travel with all 16 shades of that formula in these little nifty bottles that I got at the container store. So I decant all of my foundations into these nifty little jars and then I label them so you know what shade it is. And then I kind of just put them all together. I interweave them with this little piece of fabric so that they don't crack or break. Um, and I've traveled the globe with this. I've never had any issues with it. So um, I love this. It's great for travel. I can fit more shades into a smaller space in my kit. Um, and then I just refill them as needed. So Ethereal Skin Illuminating Foundation, we'll show that in just a moment. Next up is our full coverage matte finish long wearing foundation balm. This is called the Foundation Balm. It actually comes with a brush. Let me find my brush to show you. So it comes with a little brush. This, sorry, it's a little bit dirty. I just used this the other day. Um, foundation Balm, it's a creamier formula. It's got hydrating and nourishing ingredients, although it has a long wearing matte finish. So with um, those three formulas, I can create any style of complexion. Then comes the magic. This is called Sensual Skin Enhancer. Sensual Skin Enhancer is an incredible, original, iconic Kevin O'Quan designed product. Um, it's quite a bit of product in this little tub when you consider how much pigment is in there. It is creamy, it's versatile, it comes in 16 shades that you can mix and blend to custom blend your own foundations, highlight, contour, conceal. There's really endless possibilities with Sensual Skin Enhancer. It is my go-to, I think, for working on set because I can travel with all 16 shades in my own little container. So I put all 16 in these little containers. Of course, I label them. I can hold this up to my client from a distance to kind of determine which shades are the closest to their skin tone and then mix and blend them as needed. Um, along with Central Skin Enhancer, you definitely want to travel with the Central Skin Primer because this is gonna help you to adjust the coverage. Central Skin Enhancer by nature is a full coverage formula. I mean, it's really probably the best coverage you can get. Um, and it does have a natural skin finish so that's like a magical formula it looks like skin although it's full coverage mix and blend it with primers glass glow face to adjust that coverage and bring it to the coverage that you want um, and then for concealers we have the etherealist uh, concealer. So I love the Etherealist Concealer. It's a traditional like little wand concealer. You just do a little dot here and there and blend it out. So now it's time to talk about these formulas a little bit more and show you what they look like. So I've got them all up here starting with um, Strip Nude Skin Tint, Etherealist Foundation, Foundation Balm, and my um, Central Skin Enhancer. You can see them all there. So this is liquid and it's very sheer. So you can see through that formula. 
let me take a little bit out and put it on my face so you can see it. So it just reduces redness in the skin. This is a great formula for adding hydration and a nice radiant glow to your clients or to yourself. This is like an everyday, throw it on and run out the door. Um, if you're working with a client that has beautiful skin, you don't need to paint them with full coverage. I would go straight into my strip nude skin tint. And oftentimes if I'm doing like really natural beauty, I start with something really sheer and then add more coverage with a, with a medium coverage, full coverage, or a concealer product. So that's strip nude skin tint. This is called the Ethereal Skin Illuminating Foundation. You can right away see that it's more medium coverage where this one you can see through a little bit more. So let's do a little bit of the Etherealist up here. You can definitely see a difference. See how it covers up my skin. The good thing about a medium coverage formula like this is that it can be sheared down to almost nothing or it can be layered up to a little bit more coverage. Um, I love this. This is shade number six. Next, I want to show you foundation balm. This is the foundation balm. This is more of that matte finish texture, long wearing. It is absorbing light, which means it's going to be great for anybody with an oily skin type. So I'm going to take a little bit right here and you can immediately see that it's got great coverage. It's got hyaluronic acid, vitamin E, avocado oil, um, olive fruit extract. It's got all of these incredibly beneficial ingredients for your skin, uh, but it's a lightweight product even though it's full coverage which I love. Um, I definitely have used this on my clients. I tend to mix it with a product called Glass Glow Face or with my primer again to adjust coverage and give it a little bit more glow if I need that. Um, but you can see it absorbs light. You don't see any of the skin through the formula. Next up, Essential Skin Enhancer. I'm using shade number nine just to demonstrate how I like to use it under my eyes. So I take a little bit out onto a duet concealer brush from Kevin. This has got a precision end and a fluffy end for buffing it out. Um, to apply this product, I just tilt my chin down but look up at the mirror. So you can see those little places of shadow here. I even do this with my clients. I'll have them look up with their eyes but then tilt their chin down towards the chest and then quickly blend it out. So you can see it's incredible coverage. Shade number nine is my go-to for color correcting around my eye area because it's got a little bit more warmth to it. It's got almost like a salmon color, which helps to counteract any purple or blue that's in the dark circle around the eye area. For deeper skin tones, I go for shade number 14, and it does the same thing. It gets rid of that like khaki green brown color that shows up as a dark circle sometimes. Um, and then again, like I said earlier, Essential Skin Enhancer can be blended out with some primer or beauty oil to adjust the coverage to the level of your needs. The next product is an absolute essential to every makeup application. It's gonna help you transition between your cream liquid foundations into your powder products. And this is a loose setting powder by Kevin O'Quan Beauty. I've tried all kinds of powders on the market, pressed, loose. I love loose powder for many reasons. The main reasons of loose powder is really good is that it's gonna to help to set the makeup, it's gonna control oil and shine, and it's also gonna to help to blur imperfections and texture. In addition to that, the Kevin O'Quan loose setting powder is so refined that it helps to blend other powder products over top like a powder sculpt highlight or blusher. Um, this is a great product for a pro because it has a cap that screws on tight. Um, if you want to use it, it comes with a powder puff, but the best part is this locking door mechanism that's right here so that your powder does not escape into your kit when you're traveling. Now, I've already powdered this half of my face. I thought it would be nice to show you um, the difference between a powder set makeup versus that glowy effect without any powder. So that's why you'll find that pro artists will sometimes wait to powder until they get to set so they can only powder the areas that they don't want shine. Um, for powder application methods, I like to use a powder brush. So I'm using this blusher brush. I dipped it into my loose powder and then rather than tapping it or shaking it, I'm going to hold it upright and give it a good smack on the table. That smack helps to drop the powder down into the brush so that when I go to apply it, it's not going to fall out onto my outfit or get onto the camera lens or make a mess. Uh, it's a really important method too because you're not wasting any product. Now for around the eye areas, I will sometimes take the back of my brush, a, a smaller brush would probably be better, like a lip brush, just to remove any excess product. See how much extra product was around the eye area? That can lead to creasing. So once you've removed that excess product and use the back of the brush to press and roll that concealer closer to the skin, then you can gently press and roll a little layer of loose setting powder over top. Now once I've put loose powder over my entire complexion, I'll use the same brush just to dust off any excess powder and then go into applying my powder highlight contour blusher bronzer all of those other products 
Directly following your powder application is the absolute best time to apply your powder, highlight, contour, blush, or bronzer products. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to create a little bit of dimension in the face with our sculpting powders. And there's a lot of options for sculpting powders at Kevin O'Quan Beauty. You can buy them individually, which is the original iconic Kevin O'Quan Sculpt Powder. This is the shade medium. That's my go-to shade, but there's also a light and a deep. You can purchase the same product in a book called the Contra Book Volume 3. It has all three shades of sculpting powders, a limited edition blusher bronzer combo plus two limited edition highlighters, or you can get the Duo. This is really great for travel. It doesn't take up much room in the kit. It is a sculpting highlighting duo featuring the candlelight highlighter and the medium sculpting powder. Today, I'm gonna use the individual sculpting powder. I feel like, um, I love this packaging, it looks really sleek, it's really sexy when I open it up in front of my clients. Um, and to apply it, you can dip directly in and then apply, but for more hygienic purposes, I like to do the ghosting method. So I'm gonna take a little bit onto a tissue, and that's this has become my palette now. So I load my brush with product, and then before you go to apply it, work it into the bristles. This is gonna push the product deep into the brush so that when you go to apply it, there are no hard lines of demarcation. You always get a very airbrushed finish or look to the product and it prevents fallout. So that ghosting method and then working it into the brush is the same technique that I use for applying eyeshadows, any type of pressed powder product, essentially. Work it into the brush and then go to apply it. Um, the next thing I want to show you is our highlighter. So again, you can get it in the duo. There's the, the candlelight highlighter here. You can get it in the Contour Book Volume 3 with the two limited edition highlighters. You can also get the individual highlighting palette called Sahara. This is called a Neo Powder Highlighter. Anytime you hear, hear the word Neo powder at Kevin O'Quan or Neo, it means that there's three shades inside. There's a light, a medium, and a deep. Um, and the same is true of our bronzer. This is Neo Bronzer in light, and it has the three shades in it. And our blushers, this is called Neo Blusher in Sunset. It's kind of like that peachy warm shade right here. Um, so let's apply just a little bit of those products. So the first thing I wanna do is apply a little bit of blusher, and I'm using my favorite shade called Sunset. To use a Neo powder, you can swipe your brush across all three shades to create your own custom shade of blush, or if you wanna select one of the three shades, just swipe your brush up and down. So I usually like to start in the middle and then pick up a little extra of that golden shade from the palette. Before I apply it to my cheek, I'm gonna work it into the brush and then do a little figure eight motion. This is just a classic blush method. Um, I like a little bit on the bridge of the nose and a little bit on the temple as well. The next product I want to show you is the bronzer. So this is the Neo Bronzer in the Sunrise Light Shade. So it's got the three shades in there and for bronzer I love all three shades. So I'm going to blend them all together on my fan brush work it into the bristles, and then start right at the top of the forehead. As I bring that product down, my pressure changes from more pressure to lighter pressure so that I get a little more color payoff on the forehead. And then as I work down, it gets a little bit lighter. So we get that nice gradient. And then I like to connect my sculpting on the side of the face with a little bronzer too. Um, after that, it's time to highlight. Now you can go into the Contour Book Volume 3 and use these highlighters here. You can again go into that sculpting duo and use the candlelight highlighter there, or you can use one of my favorite products from the brand. This is called the Glass Glow Face, and it comes in six different shades. I'm gonna hold them up because they're so beautiful, but you can check them all out on the website. Um, these are amazing. And the shade that I'm gonna demo for you today is called Pixie Dream. You can tell I love this color because it's almost empty. So to use this product, there's many ways to use it. You can mix it into your primer, your moisturizer. You can apply it underneath your foundations, or you can blend it into your foundations. And then the other way I like to wear it is on top at the end of the makeup application. So I'm gonna take just a tiny bit out on the back of my hand of Pixie Dream, work it into my finger really good, and then I'm gonna find my light. So I'm gonna work my face at different angles to see how the light reflects off of my bone structure to see what's the most flattering. And I like this reflection of light right here. So I wanna emphasize that area with a little bit of my glass glow. Take a look at that. See how it brought some instant vitality and youthfulness to the skin. Glass Glow Face is one of my favorite products. Now let's talk eyebrows. Eyebrows are so important to framing the eye shape. I love to do the eyebrows before I do eyeshadows because it helps to establish how much space you have to work with your eyeshadows. There's two products from Kevin O'Quan that I travel with in my kit for brows, the Precision Eyebrow Pencil and the new True Feather Brow Eyebrow Gel Marker slash Brow Set product. Um, I travel with all of the shades in these products. They don't take up a lot of room in the kit. There's only three shades in the Precision Brow Pencil and there's only four shades in the True Feather Brow product. So you can imagine they're very 
very versatile and um, they don't take up a lot a lot of room. So I want to show you both. I'm going to start with the pencil first. In the back end, there's a little comb. I like to start by combing the brow hairs first. Um, Oftentimes before I do brows, I will clean them up with a little Q-tip and a little makeup remover because if you do not, that little bit of foundation and powder that's in the brow hairs is going gonna, is gonna to affect the way your brow product goes on. It might prevent it from going on. It might make the brows look a little bit muddy or gray cast. So you can see with a Q-tip and a little remover, instantly my brow hairs look a little bit darker and a little bit cleaner. Um, there was a lot of product on there. It's hard to see, but um, on the Q-tip, you can definitely see that. And um, I think also skincare can affect the way that your brow product goes on. So before I apply anything for the brows, just do a quick little cleanup. Um, and then, like I said earlier, I'm going to comb the hairs using the back end of the brow pencil. And then this allows you to see where there's any little sparse areas that you can fill in. This shade that I'm using today is called Dark Brunette. It's my go-to shade for most skin tones. The good thing about the pencil is that the lighter the pressure, the more sheer the application. The more pressure that you use when applying, the more intense the application. So um, Kevin really liked a natural brow. And in his book, he talks about sketching the brow. So it's all about drawing in one hair at a time. And once you've filled in those little sparse areas, then you can go through and redirect the hair in the right direction, again, by using the comb. I'll put the cap back on, just to kind of comb those hairs back into place. Um, the three shades of this brow pencil are iconic. They're original colors from Kevin, and everyone is obsessed with them. Um, now let's talk true feather brow. So this is something new. It's got a gel marker on one end with a precision tool application, and then the back end has a little clear brow set. So just like we did with the pencil, I like to comb all the brow hair straight up and see where I have any sparse areas. Then I'm going to prime the gel on the back of my hand. Um, you can see the pigment there is pretty good. This is the dark brunette also. Um, good thing about this pencil is that it goes on sheer and it goes on long wearing. The benefit to that is that once it sets, you can add additional layers to create a more intense brow if needed. And I'm gonna use the same method that I did before just to fill in any sparse areas. Now, if someone doesn't have any brow hair or they just didn't survive, the brows didn't survive the 90s, or let's say they're going through a treatment where they lose their hair, um, you want to use multiple shades of the pencil or the true feather brow to create the illusion of highlights and lowlights. Um, that's going to be important to create a more natural effect. Now, this is not a felt tip. This is actually a little small synthetic fiber tip. So it's very precise, similar to like um, a calligraphy marker or calligraphy pen. And then, like I said before, the back end has that beautiful clear brow set. So now I can use this to style my brows in the right direction. The good thing about this brow set is that it does lock the hair in place. It feels lightweight and it doesn't feel crunchy. I hate it when my brows don't move, when they feel really, really tight on my face. Um, I'm going to put a little bit on this side too. So you can see there's a great partnership between the pencil and the True Feather Brow Gel Marker. Now it's time to talk about eyes. Now let's talk about our eye products. We have a lot of options to choose from at Kevin O'Quan Beauty and I travel with all of them in my kit. So that suitcase that I showed you earlier contained all of our eye products. So it doesn't take up a lot of room. Um, the first thing that I wanna show you is our eye pencils. So we have um, two pencils, so it makes it really simple, just a brown and a black. The brown one's called Kobika. The black one is called Vanta. And this is a self-sharpening pencil, easy to use. To sharpen it, all you do is twist it in the cap until you feel a click. And then when you open it up, you get a fresh point to work with. Now this pencil can be used in the waterline, on the lash line. I have smudged it out as an eyeshadow base. Um, really versatile, long wearing and water resistant. So it's gonna stay on for long periods of time. That makes it ideal for bridal and special occasion makeup or anybody that struggles with like watery eyes. Next up for eyeshadows, we have a lot of options. I want to start off with two of the most important that just launched at the brand. These are new and they're limited edition. So if you like them, I would pick them up right away. These are called the limited edition eyeshadow palettes. There's two, right? This one is called Something Nude. It features an array of neutrals, browns, bronzes, and a few little pops of warmth in there and a lot of different textures to play with. So this is like a go-to everyday style palette. Some of these colors I can even use to sculpt out the brow or even the cheekbone. So the great versatile palette. This one's called Something Nude. Um, the next one is called Blitz Kid. It's a little bit similar, but it's got more playful shades. You've got some really bright contrasting shades and that really dark matte black. So with both of these palettes, I kind of have a little bit of everything. 
Um, the next palettes that we have are called the Emphasize Eye Design palettes. These are fun because they're grouped into color families. So there's a brown, a purple, a copper, and a neutral. Um, this one is called Focused. You can see there's some nice warm brown shades and different textures, a nice bone colored highlighter. And then it comes with one of the magical products that I love from Kevin O'Quan Beauty, the Cream Foil Eyeshadow, which is a long wearing water resistant eyeshadow that can be used as a base or on its own. Something that is also limited edition with the product is the Cream Foil Kaleidochrome Trio. So if you like those cream foil shadows and you don't want to invest in the Emphasize Eye Design palette, this is the best investment. You get three shades of cream foil, a light, a bronze, and a copper that are versatile and they work for all skin tones. And it's all about that real simple method of application. So when working with a cream foil shadow, less is more is the approach. Um, I don't like to dot it directly on the eye. I like to keep things hygienic. So I'll put it on the back of my hand when it's sanitized or on a palette. And then you can use a precision brush for application, like a concealer brush or a fluffy brush. I'm gonna use a fluffy brush. And this time I'm gonna use this as my eyeshadow for the day. So just load your brush, just like if it was a powder shadow and start dusting it over the eyelid. Now this shade is from the Kaleidochrome Cream Foil Trio. It's the bronzier shade. Um, it's an everyday type of color. Um, once it sets, it's not going to budge. And I love how it's kind of goof proof. If you make a mistake, it's not super noticeable. It reads beautiful on camera as like a, a wet lid or just like a shimmer on the lid. Um, and like I said, it makes a great base. So now that that's on, you can go over top with any of your powder eyeshadow products. Next up, let's talk about mascara. But I can't talk about mascara without curling my eyelashes first. So I'm gonna use the Kevin O'Quan Lash Curler. This is an iconic must-have product that I see backstage at all fashion shows, at productions. Um, you always recognize it because of the red silicone strip. It's unique to the brand. When looking at the shape of this, you might think it's just a normal curler, but when Kevin designed this, it was all about finding the perfect curler for all eye shapes. So you'll notice that the curve of the curler is a little bit wider. It's not so rounded and crunched, so it's not gonna pinch the inner and outer corner of the eye. The mouth opens really wide so that it captures all your lashes. And then that red silicone strip allows you to see the lashes as you're pushing them through. So it really helps when you're applying to your clients to not pinch their skin because there's a clear, demarcation between the skin and then the red silicone strip. Um, I think um, a curler should be replaced about every six to eight months. You know that little red silicone strip needs to be replaced every three to six months and um, it does come with one replacement curler so this is a really good investment. Um, I like to crimp right at the root of the lash release pressure and then crimp it again about halfway out. But look at the difference. Remember my lashes before, they were like straight down. You don't even see them. So for me, curling my lashes is an every single day ritual. Um, I like to do a little extra too because I want my lashes to really stand out. Um, and for mascaras, we have three options. We have two of our standards that are OG and super popular in the pro community. We've got the volume mascara and the curly mascara, and then we have a new one called Indecent. So let's take a look at some of these brushes. I think that's important because when you're choosing a mascara, you want the one with the right brush for you. So volume mascara is a tubing formula and has a really small brush for precision application. I've just wiped off the formula so that you can see the bristles. It's perfect for smaller eyes, hooded lids, detailing those hard to reach lashes and the bottom lashes. Because it's a tubing formula, it goes on without flaking or traveling or anything like that. And then it's easy for removal, which I love. I don't love waterproof mascara because it's difficult for removal. This mascara will come off with just a little gentle rub and some warm water in the shower, although it stays on all day long. The next one is the curling mascara. Now, it's the same tubing formula as the volume mascara, it just happens to to have a bigger brush. So just to show you the brush, I wiped it off on a tissue. You can see the bristles. This is a traditional brush. So this is actually a great brush for adding length, curl, and giving you those ultra HD ready lashes because it keeps them really feathery and really separated. Now the new mascara, the piece de resistance. This is the indecent mascara which launches this year and um, 
I am obsessed with it for many reasons. I love the brush. It's kind of like the best of all worlds because if you look at the shape of the brush, it's got a skinny end and a wide end. So it's like you took a little bit of the volume mascara brush, that skinny brush, and a little bit of the curly mascara, that wider, fluffier brush, and made it into one brush. The formula is dramatic. So one or two coats is all you need. I usually just do one for myself. If I do two, I get extra crazy lashes, but take a look at that instant result. Um, in addition to being a beautifully dramatic mascara, it has ingredients to help those lashes grow. Mung bean extract and red clover leaf extract actually promote longer, healthier lashes. So it's almost like you get a lash serum and a dramatic mascara all in one. Um, and if you wanted to really style the lashes, you can use multiple mascaras. So oftentimes I'll start off with volume or curling and then I'll add additional drama with a different mascara like the Indecent Mascara. Last but not least, let's do a quick conversation on the lip products I travel with in my kit. So at Kevin O'Quan, we have the right amount of lip products. I travel with all of the shades. And like I said earlier in some of the other products, they don't take up that much room in my kit because I travel them, travel with them in this nifty pencil roll that I have. Um, I first start out with the Unforgettable Lip Definer. There are six shades of Unforgettable Lip Definer that are designed to match your natural lip color. It was Kevin's theory that your lip pencil should match your natural lip color so that no matter what you put on top, it all always matches it always goes together and these are amazing it comes with the pencil on one end a brush on the other and a pencil sharpener so it's a really great value you get everything you need in one place I'm gonna start by lining my lip with a shade called carnal um, c-a-r-n-a-l carnal I love this shade it reminds me a little bit of like a 90s lip I start in the center and then I connect from the corners to the middle and I do the same thing on the bottom start in the center and then connect from the corners to the middle. Next, we're gonna apply lipstick. There are 18 shades of unforgettable lipsticks at Kevin O'Quan Beauty, and I like all 18 shades because each one is unique. Um, there are three different textures. There's shine, cream, and matte. I love the shine texture to give me a glossier, more full pouty lip. I like the creamier texture for more opacity and also that like creamy satiny finish. And then the matte lip is awesome. The matte texture is really matte. It absorbs light, but it's super comfortable. Today I'm gonna use one of my favorite shades. It's called Immaculate from the cream category. So it's a nice creamy nude. So it's not, it's not going to uh, dry out the lip at all. Start by pressing it right into the center there. And then I can use my lip brush or I can just kind of smudge it in together. So um, this is the, the brush from the back of the Unforgettable Lip Definer. And then to finish the lip off, I'm gonna use Glass Glow Lip in one of my favorite shades, Prism Rose. It comes in three shades, but this is my go-to and this is my personal one. So I'm gonna use it directly on my lip. The benefit to a lip gloss is that it hides texture. It makes things look smoother and adds another element of dimension to the lip. And I love a nude, glossy lip. I hope you enjoyed my new year, new kit tour and picked up a lot of valuable tips and tricks along the way. If you love this style of education and are looking for some more information on the products, tips and tricks, feel free to check out our Kevin O'Quan IGTV account or our YouTube channel where we house an entire library on all of our products, tips, tricks, and techniques. Um, I hope to see you and see what you're coming up with with all of your makeup design. So make sure that you tag us at Kevin O'Quan and hashtag Team Kevin so that we can follow along on your your makeup journey. Light it up.